What's up guys? Welcome back to the Educated Bar Flight. Today we're going to be making a cocktail from a bartender named Phil Ward. If you guys don't know who Phil Ward is, you should know who Phil Ward is because Phil Ward, other than me just saying his name that many times in two sentences, uh, was... What if he does it three times in a row in front of Phil me? Ward, Phil Ward, Phil Ward. Maybe I would just be like, bing! Awesome cocktail just appears in front of me. <laughs> Uh, that would be amazing! It didn't work though, because I just did it, and it, no awesome cocktail appeared. I mean, an awesome cocktail will appear. And as I'm looking at all this stuff, I realize there's something... Yeah, I forgot something. You know what I forgot? I got this, my strainer. You know, my fine strainer. Got my grapefruit. Got my peeler. Got my alcohol. Got my ice. What'd I forget? Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. what I forget? Well, I'm asking the viewers. What, what did he forget? <laughs> They're all going to be like, oh, I know, I know. He forgot to comb his hair. He forgot to smile. He forgot... Well, I forgot glassware. That's what I forgot. <laughs> Luckily, it's just right off camera, you guys. So, And look at this. I love this glass. It's like this nice... Kind of reminds me of a... Um, what would you call this? Like mid-century modern? Like a Rat Pack style? Like 1950s sort of cocktail glass? I'm not really that into cocktail glasses either. I really like a coupe. Or a Nick and Nora, but this one is just so nice. It's a nice little, I was going to call this starburst pattern. Does that make sense? The little starburst pattern? It's like, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, today uh, we are shooting the bedhead day episodes because I wasn't able to comb my hair or put product in it. And I just basically rolled out of bed and started doing this. So everything that we shoot today will be the bedhead episodes um and you guys are just gonna have to figure out which ones those are all right so let's get back to the cocktail though marius enough jibba jabba enough fraternizing with the camera guy let's get into the cocktail which is why we're all here all right so this cocktail is called the De what what are we gonna say I, th I think you forgot the whole thing about ward didn't you, you start saying something and then he well i was gonna get back into phil ward i was gonna Yes, I did. Well, I tried to summon, I tried to make the like spirit of Phil Ward summon a cocktail as I really tried to do. So it would be so much easier if I was just like, Phil Ward, Phil Ward, Phil Ward, boom! And then it was like a cocktail appeared and I didn't even have to make it. We forgot <laughs> that would be to amazing. say who he was or who he is. I know because we got like off on this kind of tangent. Well, you, you actually, honestly, you are the one that made the tangent happen. Um, I was going to talk about this cocktail because it was created by Phil Ward and I was going to get into it and then you interrupted me to tell me that I got off track, which I wasn't actually off track. You just needed to close your mouth enough to listen to me for long enough to know that I was going to get to it. Marius knows how long-winded I am and then also I'll like, sometimes I'll start on a thought and then just change thoughts mid-sentence. It's part of my ADHD it's just the, the beauty of my ADHD, that and the hyperactivity that you see on a daily basis here on this uh, Educated Bar Fly. Okay, so Phil Ward. So this cocktail is called the Division Bell. It was created by Phil Ward for um, a mezcal bar in, uh, I think it's in the village in uh, maybe the West Village of New York. Maybe I'm making that up, maybe I'm not. It's called Mayahul. And uh, this was a cocktail that he created uh, for uh, the opening menu. So uh, Phil Ward, if you don't know who Phil Ward is, See, I'm getting it to now. If you don't know who Phil Ward is, you should. He is one of the most prolific bartenders in New York City. He has worked for so many different of the, uh, of the uh, bar programs that kind of sort of contributed to the like cocktail renaissance of the early 2000s. Somebody is ringing the doorbell, which is weird. I wasn't expecting anyone. Now they're going to have to wait because we're in the middle of a thing. You want to go see who it is? Marius is going to go see who it is. This is going to be a very long episode because I think that we're just going to continue. Who is it? Uh, I don't know. Like they're, they're either... Like Jehovah's like Witnesses? Jehovah's, yeah. Or, or they're doing a survey or something. There's two guys and they saw... Mormons! Man, I'm not going to let the Mormons uh, wreck our video with a, uh, with a, with a, with a bell. All right, let's 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 get into, let's get, keep going. What was I saying? Okay, Phil Ward, Maya Huell is the cocktail bar that, uh, where this was created. It's called a Division Bell. Um, and this is a perfect example of how much um, mileage like contemporary bartenders have gotten out of the last word. So this is a last word style cocktail. All right, I'm going to get into the drink because I was talking so long that all of my ice is melting and the, Jeho and the uh, I was going to call them Jehovah's Witnesses, but they could have, I don't know. 
Well, what were they wearing? Were they wearing like like white, like with a black ties, and then they're Mormons? Well, what does the Jehovah's people wear? I don't know. I think that they should kind of look like. Isn't it just like suit just and like, tie kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, just like suit and tie. But no, no. But the Mormons are specifically white shirt, black tie, black pants, and they're on bikes usually, as opposed to the Jehovah's Witnesses with travel in groups of three or four. Mm -hmm. And they then they, Jehovah's. what's that? They could have been Jehovah's. All right, whatever. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, some God people were at the door. All right, let's get into it. So first thing we're going to do is three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Three quarters of an ounce of Aperol, the bottle that just won't die. It just, it looks like this every week. And I just cannot for the life of me use all of it. And we need a new bottle. All of those are true. Three quarters of an ounce of Aperol. We are doing half an ounce of maraschino. Sometimes I say maraschino, and people are like, it's pronounced maraschino, dude. I'm going to look that up. I think I was right. Anyway, half an ounce of Luxardo maraschino, maraschino liqueur. And then we're going to be using some Espadine te uh, Mezcal. I almost said tequila, but it's not tequila. It is Mezcal. Um, this company, uh, Lopez Real, is a brand new company, and... They've got some good juice. They've got some Tobala. They've got some uh, mezcal sort of like uh, agave blends. And then this is their Espadin. Um, this is going to be a little bit hard to find for now. So uh, Vita Mezcal would be a good sub. But if you can get this, it is the shiz nizzle. All right. As Snoop Dogg would say. All right. We'll do one ounce of mezcal. Add our ice to our tin. And as you can see, I'm using the cloudy ice because today I cut a bunch of ice and this was uh, what we call the junk ice. Uh, and you can use it for shaking. There is nothing wrong with it for shaking. And then what we do is get a nice shake. All right. Ooh, we got a nice lock on that one just today. It's good. And then we're gonna Double strain our cocktail. Ah! That's a lot of volume, but it'll just give me more to sip for later. Ooh, let's get it all in there. Let's get it all in there. All right, and then we're gonna do like a nice grapefruit twist, but this is gonna be a grapefruit twist and discard. So we're just gonna twist it, kind of rub the oils, pet it aside, take a sipperelli. A sipperip a ding dong. Oh, I'm spilling. Mmm, that is good. You know what I love about this is that it is very well balanced, but it is got no actual sugar content. The sweetness is being provided by the uh, Luxardo, which is also drying it out. You have the mezcal in here that is really, really well balanced in this cocktail. Um, you can taste it, but it is combining with the other ingredients. You get that nice tartness from the lime. The Aperol provides... It's bitterness, but as you know, Aperol is a little bit sweeter than Campari, so it's not as bitter. It's kind of a lightly bitter. Uh, the, definitely a crushable cocktail, nice for the hot weather. I don't know what more to say about it other than that, like this is a beaut, and you should drink it. Uh, thank you, Phil Ward. Phil Ward, Phil Ward, Phil Ward. This is worth a try. I was trying to, I was trying to multiply it but uh, I guess it didn't work. Okay, uh, there you have it. So if you like our channel, guys, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon. We've got some awesome Patreon content that does not come to YouTube. It is exclusive for Patreon um, uh, at patreon.com slash the educated barfly. Uh, Patreon uh, tiers have changed. Uh, we now have only three tiers. One of them is just like a $1 tier for people who just want to give to our channel because they, they like what we do and they're gonna help us out. And that's great because honestly, the more people who do $1 subs, that's not that much for them, helps us out greatly because that can multiply. Uh, we've got a $10 tier, which is the main tier. And then we've got a $20 tier, which is the mystery box tier. If you want to know what that all means, go to patreon.com slash the educated barfly and check it out. Also, I did not mention this when I said sub our channel and subscribe uh, and, and like, but also hit the ringer, hit the little bell icon. That, that makes, I was like looking at Maris because Maris was like, mm, oh yeah, yeah, hit the bell icon. Yeah, hit the bell icon because that will give you a notification um, because, you know, here's the thing about YouTube. They don't notify everybody that subs right away because they can't. It's very hard for them to do that. They have been, they're dealing with like, what, a billion people every day? 
more, 500 million, I don't know, lots of people on YouTube that are creating and a lot of people are subbing. So if you hit that bell icon, it will make sure that you get notified. If notifications irritate you, I'm not gonna hold it against you. Anyway, I love you guys. I'll see you guys on the next tutorial. Yeah.